lips kissed your soul I swallowed all my pride Nibbled at the grid I have grip Okay, so we're in Perth, Western Australia as we speak and uh, very fortunate place to be in the world. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, we have been affected here in, in, in different ways and, and it's certainly affected musicians. It so has. just as, um, to start with, um, what's the last six months been like for you and uh, in terms of how it's played out in what you're about to do? Well, it's been a very, very difficult six months. I had uh, two tours of France cancelled, probably 25 shows. I had about... I think about 17 shows, locally shows, cancelled because I was booking ahead because I was going back and forth all the time. And I was discussing a tour of Melbourne and Sydney and that for, for the new album. So it's the longest I've ever gone without playing in my life. Uh, been a very difficult year, uh, sorry, six months financially and just, just emotionally because I need to play like it's not just the money, it's just I need to play, you know, I, I'm, I like playing music, so it's, and, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not alone. But, and it's been very difficult with friends dying and stuff like that. You know, there's been a few friends dying, and, which has been very difficult. Uh, it's just been a very strange six months or probably longer, I guess, now. But, but I feel really positive about the future, but... It has been a very strange um, time in the world, but you know, so we're not alone. But we are in the safest place probably on the planet. So yeah. yeah. Well, with what you're going to do soon, um, travel interstate here in Australia and international travel is something that's been uh, restricted, if not completely mm. Uh, mm. wiped out. But um, in doing what you want to do. You made it happen for yourself to be able to return to Paris. Yes. To, yeah, so I got I got approval from the Home Office, which was uh, well. I just applied because I get more work there, and you know I got personal reasons as well. But um, yeah, I just like to play, and I mean, I, work is very tough here. So uh, if I hadn't been leaving, I would have been. Probably, I mean, I've got about six gigs this month, but if I had, wasn't leaving, I probably would have got one. So I can't survive on one emotionally or spiritually, not just money. Uh, I need to play. So, uh, yeah, and I love Paris. I mean, it's a great city. I feel really, I feel really connected there. I, I've been connected since I first, I first went there in 74 and basically fell in love with the city, you know. I mean, it's an incredible city. I've got a lot of friends there. I like the culture, the people, the whole thing there. They respect people in the arts like a hundred times more than here. So I just like like it. And, you know, my plan is to um, come back for tours, live there, but tour here when the quarantine ends and come back regularly. And it's ironic, really, because when I'm in Paris, I can get work here easier than when I'm living here. When I'm in when I was in Paris, I could book tours here much easier than when I actually live here, which is strange, but that's reality, you know. Yeah. Why well, do you think that is? Is there some kind of cultural oh, thing I, I all think, away from Paris? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I don't understand that, you know, because obviously I'm still I'm from Perth or Maylands. You know, I mean, I'm. I'm I'm Australian, so I mean, I'm in a half Macedonian or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I just find it strange, really, that, you know, and, and I think I'm playing the best I've ever played. I, I really think I'm playing, you know, I really think I'm playing the best I've ever played. I'm writing a lot of new songs. I've written 13 new songs since I did the album. So I've already got another album really ready, you know, so I plan on releasing albums much more regularly now, so... You know, oh, this, there's been quite a delay with the last one to this one for various reasons, but uh, I plan on releasing albums every 18 months at the most, 
probably every year, but it's a lot of work. Recording is easy for me. I don't, you know, everything's first take. I don't. Rec recording is easy for me. Mixing, I like. I like the mixing and the mastering process. Recording is easy, especially solo, you know. But I just, I just write songs, so you know, I, I don't. You know, I'm a writer, so. Mm -hmm. So is it a case in isolation where, because uh, you weren't performing, and you know, we had more time that you were writing a lot or were you just going to be, you would have written not, that much anyway? Not really. My life hasn't changed at all in that sense. I, I live a very quiet life. I, 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 I'm, I'm a real home person, so I was already writing stuff before the virus hit, so I just have, I'm just going through a very creative period, so for various reasons. But it's not the virus that's inspired me to write. I, I don't need any, I'm inspired. My life, you know, a lot of, a lot of things. Really. I'm, I'm not, you know, I suppose some people may have changed their lifestyle, but my lifestyle is basically the same as it's always been. I, I live a very quiet life. I, I, you know, I live alone and, and I write songs, you know, so I, I don't, I listen to music all the time. I rarely watch TV. And in fact, I didn't have a TV until recently because it, I got my mother's TV given back to me by Howie Johnson, who I'd given it to after my mother died. But I don't really watch it. You know, I, I like music, so mm. I, like, I like discovering new music, and I love seeing live music. For me, live music is, is what music's about. You know, I, you know, I just love playing, and I love seeing musicians play. You know. Yeah. So, and, so, yeah. so my, my, you know, my life hasn't changed at all, really. You know, not not really, I don't think. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm that, you know, I don't really go out that much except to see live music. Mm. You know, yeah. And my kids. Mm. So with this album, just in, in terms of the juncture in your life and where you are and where many rivers meet mm. and there's 25 songs mm. on it and it is uh, in a solo album. And mono. And mono. Um, mm, so, what um, what were your thoughts going into it? Uh, how much was it planned out about this will be this many songs? It'll be no, I had, and, and song choices. And no, I, I went in. I went in with. Uh, I discussed it with Rob. You know, Rob Grant from Poom's Head. What I wanted to do. Basically, I just wanted to go in there and record as many songs as possible, within the his normal time thing you know whatever 10 hours or whatever it was so we recorded 39 tracks and originally I was going to release it as a double album and then I decided no I'll just do one album and pick the best um, performances whether it was original or a cappella or a blues arrangement I, I just decided I'd just pick the best performances and that's what I did it's the first time I've never released a complete session so yeah but uh, yeah I mean I just wanted I, I wanted to do it well I did want it I, I, it was going to be mono from the start that's for sure and because uh, I, I just listen to music in mono so I like mono so there's no question in me put, putting it out as stereo but I, I really went in there to showcase what I sound like live solo it was for work, you know. Mm. And, you know, I, had, I hadn't done an album for a few years, so for various reasons, but, uh, you know, I had a lot of songs. So there's a lot of songs that I didn't release that are originals from the session, but I didn't think they were quite as good performances as, as the one I chose. And some of the songs that on the album are actually songs that I only... probably played once before I went into the session and it, and I just did it almost spontaneously to see what they would sound like and I was really happy with it. Some of them I've written more lyrics to because some of them I didn't have any lyrics to. I just went in there and played songs and sang whatever came into my head. And But I'm really happy with those songs. There's two or three like that that I only just played just before I went into the session. So What are they? They're... Um, Ain't nothing like a woman. 
just can you just pass over that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just so I can't remember all the songs. Uh, that one and uh, uh, what's that one? Yeah. Um, Method to My Madness was a, just a last minute thing. Uh, whatever touches you was sort of half done, but and. Uh, Oh, it was about three, I guess, you know. Hold Your Nerve, I'd done once or twice. Oh, Let the Silence Suck Out the Truth. That's another one that I just... I just had a whole lot of... That one I actually had a whole lot of lyrics, but not really written out properly, you know. It was just a whole lot of lines, you know. That one was... I'd only done once at the house before I went in there. Mm. And, I, and some songs I did on the electric and the 12, because I wanted to see what they sounded like on different guitars. I didn't use my acoustic Martin six string, although I had it there and I was planning to use it, but I just went into a groove. Like we just did three sections. We did electric, 12 string and then a cappella field hollers. And, um, you know, Rob did some things with, you know, particularly one of the hollers, which was just completely bizarre, but it worked. It wasn't going to be on the album early in the morning. Mm. It was some distorted thing that he did in the studio. You know, I didn't know what he'd done until we were mixing it. Yeah, that's really interesting. I didn't know what he'd done, you know. So my performance, I wasn't actually that happy with, really. So it wasn't going to be on the album. But after I heard what he did, mm. I, I put it on there because it sort of sounds like it's exploding and it's really distorted and all that, and I really like it. And there's another one, I see that my grave is kept clean, which is just an African where you hit the guitar, you don't actually play it, so I'm hitting the guitar. I used it on a, my album Zozo once, the same method, on a song called um, Mama Lola, where it's just, you're just hitting the strings like an open thing, there's no chord. And there's some sort of really strange, high-pitched frequency things happening in that song, which I kept. Rob said he could get rid of it, but I like keeping things like that because we both sort of, when we heard, when we were doing the mix and I heard this thing, it was sort of like at a moment in the song that just took off. It was just before the song really went into another sort of thing, so I, I kept it. Uh, I'm not really into technical things. I like, I like sort of spontaneous things happening and so that. But, yeah, it's just it's really to showcase my live show. I mean, I can play better than that. You know, I, I, the, I think I played really well. I'm really happy with the vocal sound. Rob got it. I'm really happy with my vocals. Rob got an incredible 12 string sound. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the electric sound. It's, it's not a sound that I would probably have used in, a, in certain ways. But I like to give, for me, the engineer is critical and if I'm going to work with someone, I've got to give them a little bit of space to experiment, you know. So it's same with my musician. So uh, I let him, he, he actually just did the electric sound. So, I mean, it was my Vox 15 in another room, like turned on full and everything. So it was just exploding and, you know, I just turned everything on full, which I do anyway when I play. But um, I'm really happy with the sound. It's not a sound that I would have normally probably used on any album but I like it with this album and I like it with these songs so yeah it's all about work for me everything's about work I'm you know I'm really healthy I'm really positive you know I'm really focused and so everything's about work for me I need to play so as far as the original material on the, mm. on the album which makes up three quarters of yeah. it at least um, you mentioned that some of the songs have been played once. Mm. Um, how uh, how old are the older ones? Um, there might be one or two going back. A f Most of them are in the last five years, but there's a couple that are sort of were sort of seeds from a while ago, maybe ten years ago. 
one or two maybe. I'll have to have a look at them, sort of get closer. But most of them are in the last five years. Some are started in Paris. And some are, I, I, I've written quite a few at the house I live in at the moment. But And the ones that are not on the album were a mixture of uh, ones. One, one that uh, I did at the session was actually a song that I wrote for the uh, Loco album. Mm -hmm. So that's going back quite a few years. But it was interesting, but I didn't just didn't think my vocals was quite good enough on that particular song. But I liked the song, but mostly the last five years. Yeah. And so with you, I mean, the song may be recorded and that's the recorded version, but there's never, a, other than it being a recorded version, there's never a definitive no, version I don't, for you, is there? I don't think like that. Mm. My, my thing is, uh, for me, a song's never finished, really. I sing a lot of new lyrics to all my songs, really. I don't always sing the, the same as the albums, and I have people sometimes come up to me and say that I made a mistake in my own song, which to me is ridiculous, you know. I, I don't feel, I don't like being having restrictions, so, you know, if I think of a, a new lyric in a song, I'll just do it, you know. Mm. And sometimes I'll keep it, sometimes I won't keep it. I, I like freedom, you know, I give my musicians freedom, I need freedom. So um, I, ha I have, a, have had this philosophy for a long time that when I play live, I've never played that song before live. It's never been recorded, it's never been performed live. For me, that's how I approach playing. It's a very clear philosophy. I, I just approach each performance as the first time. I've had that philosophy for a long time. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, sometimes I change the keys, sometimes I change the guitar I'm using, especially solo, you know, because solo's the ultimate in freedom. I like solo. I, mean, I like. I love playing solo, you know. I love playing with the band too, but I love solo because it's sort of, I can stop and chop things and, you know, I like that freedom that I can just, you know, there's no, you can't, there's nothing in the way, not, not the musicians are in the way, but, you know, there's nothing to stop me from doing anything. And, you know, in a show, I can do anything, mm. you know. I can go, I do a lot of, a lot of things I do, I go into other songs when I do songs, you know, I do other songs because why not? I don't always do the same songs, you know, it might be an old blues song or it might be another one of my songs or... I like freedom, you know. I give, give my musicians freedom and I need, I, I really need freedom, you know. So, you know, if someone sort of says to me that I've, I've sung the wrong lyrics, I just sort of laugh really because, you know, it's probably hard for me to explain to people that, you know, what I'm just explaining now. but. That, that's been my philosophy. Yeah. yeah. Well, seeing you play, uh, not quite a fortnight ago, yeah. but when you <laughs> were uh, doing the sound check and you were uh, speaking to the other guys in the band and everyone's, yeah. everyone's hovered around fretboards and yeah. and everything and it's clear that you're telling them things that they've never yeah. played before. Well, yeah. Well, Phil knows my music pretty mm. well, you know, yeah, he probably, although I did songs that we might have only done once live before. Some of them we, we'd never done live together. Uh, Richie probably doesn't really know the songs, I guess. And Alex played a couple, one gig with me once, which with that lineup at Benefit for Errands at the Bazo. But he's a good bass player, you know, I like him, you know. But, you know I'm upside down and everything. Upside down, but he's a nice guy, you know, I like him, you know, and, and he, you know, is enthusiastic and that, I mean my thing is about I want people to relax I don't want people to be stressed out you know with me I know people think this is sort of not true and that when I say you can't make a mistake with me but that, that's my philosophy you know it's been my philosophy since 75 at least I just don't I don't like the thing of, you know, I've been through bands in the 70s particularly, early, you know, where, you know, if you made a mistake, someone would give you a dirty look or, you know, and I always liked even, in those days, I liked being a bit freer, you know, I'm, I never tried to copy someone's 
music, you know, I always try to put a bit of a spin on it, you know, and my spin, I mean. So I don't like that thing of people giving each other dirty looks or, you know, that stuff. That's why I went solo. I just got fed up with playing with the same people and I like to play with a lot of different people. I mean, I've played with hundreds of <laughs> I've mm. played with literally hundreds of people since 75, so, mm. you know. Before that, I came from bands. So, I mean, I had bands and we played seven nights a week with the same people and, and it was great. But I, I needed the freedom. I was writing songs, but I wasn't performing my songs. And I just got fed up with doing other people's songs and I had you know, in 75 I had probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 songs written. I've got 400 now, easy, yeah. easy 400. I mean, I wouldn't remember them all, but, but I just wanted to play my songs and I wanted to play with different people. Yeah. I don't rehearse. We never rehearse. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't, I couldn't stick to an arrangement in a rehearsal anyway. I don't, I don't like the idea of going, it's got to be exactly like this now and, you know, I don't want to think about music when I play, I don't think about it. And that's one of the first things I say to people that work with me, stop thinking, just forget all that, you know. Stop thinking about music, just feel it, just listen, you know. Mm. Show respect to each other, you know. I don't dictate where the, where the grooves go or where the music goes. The guys are free to take me on their journey, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no thing of, I mean, I just play the rhythm, so I set the groove, but the groove can go anywhere, depends who I play with. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got a different interpretation of my music, which I like, keeps me fresh. I work with great musicians in Paris, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like, I mean, they didn't even speak English when I met them, so for me to explain my philosophies was quite difficult, you know, because they didn't understand why I didn't rehearse, so. Mm. But they're great musicians, you know, but, mm. but, and we're good friends now and all that. So they understand the freedom thing. For me, it's just about keeping it fresh, you know. Yeah. And I do new songs on stage, so the guys are cool, everyone's cool about that. Might not be perfect the first time, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Mm. But I like to try new songs on stage. I, I don't feel restricted by it. Yeah, you know? yeah. When you, when you, you know, speaking of um, when you do play other people's songs and mm. there's interpretation and <laughs> putting your own spin on, so yeah. there's, a, there's, what about the songs on here that are, are um, interpretations yeah. and, and what, what, why did you choose those songs on this occasion? Well, I just chose them, like, for example, See That My Grave Is Kept Clean by Blind Lemon Jefferson. I really love that song, you know. I, I, ha I hadn't actually done it. That was one that I just did on the nights, purely spontaneously. I hadn't planned to do that one. I actually started another song at the session. I actually started another song and then it, I just sort of changed my mind 20 seconds in and I started doing it in a chord, playing a chord, and then I thought, oh no, you know, and then I had the idea to do this thing this African sort of rhythm thing. I like to pay respect to um, people like that, you know, Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, Lead Belly, all these, JB Lenoir, all these people were, um, are my biggest influences, you know, there's lots of people, you know. I like to interpret it because, you know, I'm not black and I'm not from Mississippi, I'm from Mayland, so it's just, <laughs> I am what I am, you know. And so it's like even if I did a Bob Dylan song, I don't necessarily sing the, exactly the same lyrics mm -hmm. and I, I don't try and copy his originals or Van Morrison or Stones. I like, I like to twist it a little bit, you know. I like to just... I like to make it my own, really. And I don't go on with set lists. I never go on with set lists. I mean, I sort of wrote a rough set list at Lyric but I just didn't take any notice of it. And I warned the guys, I said, you know, there's a list there, but I will be doing these songs, but it might not be in that order. Because I don't like people reading notes on stage. I don't want them to read notes. I want them to just, you know, I don't care if they miss a note or, you know, 
I don't want notes, you know, I don't want people referring. Because if you're, in my opinion, if you're referring to notes, you're not focusing on the, the creation of the music. You're focusing on the, on, the, on, the, on the notes that you've written out, which mean nothing to me. So I sort of say to people, throw it away, I don't, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. If I play with musicians, I say, listen to my albums and then forget. I don't want you to copy my albums because I don't copy them. So I'm very strong on that. I very I make it very clear that I don't want I don't want musicians to, that are working with me to try and copy the recordings. You know, I don't, and I don't want them to. So I like to keep it fresh. You know, it keeps me fresh. I'm, I feel really fresh. You know. So. Yeah. So with some of the artists that you mentioned before, um, mm. uh, who are the ones that? kind of resonate with you as powerfully now as they did when you discovered them? Well, all of them, you know, all those ones I mentioned, plus, you know, say for instance, John Lee Hooker. John Lee Hooker was one of my biggest influences because one chord, one chord, one man, a guitar, a voice, one chord, a lot of his songs are one chord. He showed me and inspired me that you, I could write songs with one chord and as long as it was strong, as long as the groove was strong, the vocals were strong, the lyrics were strong, that's all you need, you know. Most, a lot of my songs are one or two chords, three chords. There's a few on there that got more than that, but I don't, I don't think like that. I just write, you know. I, I, you know, I don't write blues and I don't write this. I just write, you know, whatever comes out, really. Mm. You know, I offend some blues purists. I offend world music purists. I offend other, you know, I don't... I just write songs, so I don't want to be restricted. But s people like Hooker were a big influence on me. Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, Lead Belly, I'd say, is one of the biggest influences. Mm -hmm. Blind Willie McTell, Blind Willie Johnson. These people are much bigger influences on me than, say, for example, Robert Johnson. Now, I like Robert Johnson, but Charlie Patton's a bigger influence on me than Robert Johnson. I'd say I'm closer to... in feeling to Charlie Patton, those sort of people, than Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson's a genius, you know, he's an unbelievable guitarist. But I do some Robert Johnson, but I don't try and copy him, you know. Yeah. You know, but, you know, J.B. Lenoir, I think, is one of the most underrated uh, blues musicians, and particularly lyrics. He wrote really different lyrics, you know, very different, you know. Little Walter, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, I've been listening to that music a long time, so it was, you know, the first Stones album, all that early Six Animals and all that, I mean, that's where I discovered black blues, you know, mm -hmm. from those musicians. And that's when I realised, it's just too many to, to name, but they're probably the main influences, I guess. You yeah. know, you know well, but obviously Dylan, you know. Yeah, I was going to say about Bob Dylan because, you know, <laughs> earlier this year in the autumn, he, a previous unannounced intention, he brings another album out. Yeah, I know. And it's led by a 12 minute <laughs> song about the assassination yeah. of John F. Kennedy. Yeah. It's a very it interesting so, album. Yeah. So many references to pop yeah. culture and, yeah. and, and everything. Very and interesting it, song. Yeah, and. Um, and someone had kind of said to me, he's kind of just had the same, musically the same song with different lyrics for t the last decade. Mm. Which, we're, we're, but it's maybe th there's a different templates for yeah. his delivery and the lyrics are, ama you know, still amazing. Well, he doesn't really sing anymore. Yeah, it's easy. sort of. But yeah. but it, I mean, but I, I think you have to respect Dylan. For, you know, I mean, you can't, I mean, I know a lot of people that criticise me and all that, but. He can do what he likes, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care, you know. I respect the guy, you know. I opened for him, I met him, you know. You have to respect someone like that. And, and who has done and what who, yeah, they wanted to do. Exactly, you know, he's never compromised, you know, and, and, you know, that sort of thing of... I refuse to compromise for any amount of money or anybody. I don't compromise for anybody. You know, I've been offered a lot of money to reform bands that I had in the 70s and stuff in the 60s. I flatly refuse to do that. I've worked too hard on my music. The money would be handy, but I would be a hypocrite if I did that. I, 
I don't mind other people doing it. I, I don't criticise anyone that does it, but I flatly refuse to do it. I've worked too hard on my music, and I'm playing the best I've ever played, and I have no interest in doing a, a repertoire that I did 40 years ago. I just have no interest, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I just think people like that, you know, like Dylan, Van Morris, and you know, all these people, you know, Tim Buckley was a big influence on me, very big influence. I mean, not vocally, because he's such a great vocalist, you know. I mean, I don't claim to be a great vocalist. I just sing. Well, he's I just sing. Four, four at least four octaves. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. You know, I mean, the guy's incredible. But I like, I like his spirit, you know. Mm. Particularly the early stuff for me, you know. The early stuff... And he was a 12-string player too, so, you know... I thought he had a different thing. You know, Captain Beefheart, I'd have to mention, because Captain Beefheart had a big influence on me too, because he was also another... You know, he sort of was playing the blues, sort of, in a distorted way, and then moved into this other realm, you know. And that's... People like that inspired me to... to pay respect to the tradition, but try and do something of your own, you know. John Coltrane was a big influence on me, not from a musical, you know, just the sheer spiritual thing of his music. You know, I mean, you know, I just, you know, I listen to Coltrane all the time. Charlie Mingus was a big influence as a band leader too, you know. I like, I, I describe my, sort of, some of my philosophies as, uh, Discipline, freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom, but discipline. You have to be disciplined because it's not just freedom for your ego and you know and all that stuff. It's discipline. You have to be disciplined. If when I give my musicians freedom, I expect them to be disciplined with that freedom, like listen to each other, respect each other. I have a, I have a clear philosophy when I get on stage. I'm not the the star and the band leader and all that crap. I'm just a member of the band. When I play with a band, I don't think like that. When I play solo, obviously I'm playing solo, so there's not you know there's nobody else on stage. So mm. I love playing with bands, but you know I love playing with musicians. For me, that's one of the greatest things to create music with other human beings. I only play with my friends. I don't play with anyone. I, 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 no, I, I can't play with anyone that's not my friend. Well, you kind of writing a new language every time you play. Yeah, well, and also the, everyone I play with respects me because they know I challenge them. I, I, I want them to challenge me, you know, and they know that I'm fair money-wise and all that stuff, you know, I don't rip anybody off. And, you know, it's, I, I like to... Uh, it's very difficult getting gigs with the band, you know, okay. so... Financially, I mean. So, if I get the money, I I, I play with a band. Because also, also I've got the freedom that in that show I can do a solo set if I feel like it, you know, as part of the show. Because mm. the solo stuff is so different to the band stuff. I mean, I love a cappella hollis. I mean, I love doing that. Is like. I, I don't, can't really think of a word to describe what it feels like when I do a cappella, you know. Well, the spirituality it's, side of, of music is something mm -hmm. that you've... And the other thing is that with spirituality, it's about uh, freedom and, and expansion, mm -hmm. but there are also disciplines in... Yeah, I, I'm a very disciplined man, and I'm a very disciplined musician, and I'm very healthy, you know, like... A lot of people think they're disciplined, but they're not. They're lazy. I'm not a lazy person at all. I'm very disciplined in my life, my diet, my whole, you know, I follow Ayurveda, Ayurvedic philosophies, and I've been doing that for a long time, and I'm, I'm really healthy, so... But in music, I really sort of stay, say that to people, that especially when people play with me for the first time, I explain myself very clearly to anybody that plays with me for the first time. I explain to them the, my, my philosophies and then I say, 
have fun. You gotta have fun. I have fun on stage every time I play. It's very, sometimes I talk, sometimes I don't talk, you know. So, uh, you know, I've got three gigs coming up, three different lineups. So, three people that I've never played with before. So, mm. I like the, that challenge because I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know they're all good musicians and I, I know they're all nice people, you know, they're nice human beings. So, I just, I just think, I just like to be challenged, you know, and I challenge myself. I'm, I'm, I'm my biggest critic. Nobody could be more critical of my performances than me than me, you know, except my kids, probably. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, you know, no one, no one. I don't mind people criticising me. It doesn't doesn't bother me. It doesn't change my self belief or anything. I, I, I'm ten times more critical of myself than anybody. Without, you know, I mean in a positive way, not, not in a um, suicidal sort of way, you know. Because, I, you know, I like to play really well, you know. I mean, I, I don't go on stage with the thing of, oh, you know, how can I sort of bullshit my way through this gig and just pick up the money. I, I always go out to play the best I can, you know, always. You know, I play seven hour sets sometimes in Paris four hour solo, this solo, four mm. hour solo sets. Mm. You know, I've done a lot of shows in Paris like that. I mean, everyone thinks I'm mad. But I like, I like playing, so, and I've got a lot of songs, so I don't take long breaks. I, 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 I play long sets, so if someone plays with me, they have to accept that they have to play long sets. Yeah. You know, I don't care what they do in their other bands. I'm not interested in what they do in their other bands. What they do with me, they have to accept that they have to work really hard, and that's not to say they don't work hard in their own bands. But when they work with me, they have to be, they have to really focus on, what, you know. Once you're on stage, they have to really focus on what they're doing. You know, the fo oh, for me, it's all about creating music. So, you know. Yeah. What do you think of this statement? If I say um, you've been um, disappointed. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute, not disappointed, that was not... Who said that, sorry? No, 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 I'm, oh, I want to okay. put a statement to you. Um, oh, okay. You've um, <laughs> become disillusioned with the music industry, but never disillusioned by music. No, definitely not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of disillusioned in a way with the music industry, because I find it so unnecessarily dishonest and so... Um, Oh, what's the word? Oh, I'm just trying to get my words right here. I just find there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the music industry that's unnecessary. It's almost like people have read too many magazines and they think they've got to be dishonest. And they don't have to be dishonest. They, that's why the music industry needs more honest people, whether they're musicians, agents, journalists or whatever, you know. There's no reason to be dishonest in my opinion. You know, I, I know that I intimidate people, and because I'm up front, I don't, I don't really waste my time and energy playing games. You know, I do find, um, well, you know, I, I sort of find the best description of me would be a cynical optimist or an optimistic cynic, because that's, I never lose my cynicism, but I'm always optimistic, and I'm always positive. Mm. Even during sort of hard times, I'm always I always try to be positive, you know. And you know, I've got kids too, and I've got a granddaughter, so that's you know, <laughs> you know, that's enough for me just to stay positive and healthy and disciplined, just for them alone, you know. Yeah. So uh, the shell on <laughs> the cover um, found on Rocknest Island. Yeah. Uh, and Erin's told me tonight that it's an abalone. Fossil or whatever you want, you know, which I never knew actually until tonight. Does it does it harbour harbour uh, meanings? Yeah, very personal meanings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shared with somebody. Yeah. It's uh, so it's evocative. At the very yeah. Best. Well, uh, well, uh, it wasn't going to be the original cover. Originally, it was going to be. Uh, I mean, a, a few different things. It was going to be the label, and it was going to be. The cover of the booklet and all that, and in the end, I, I, 
decided I wanted it on the cover because it's such a strong image and I really wanted something different to my other albums. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get away from... The others are darker. Yeah, I wanted, to be a, I wanted it to be a bit more sort of positive or not that the other albums are not, are not positive but I just wanted a different thing and, and it's a very different album because it's solo. Yeah, I, I just wanted it to be really different, you know, I wanted to seem to be a, a, an opportunity to um, do something quite different, you know, and I'm really happy with the cover, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, so. And inside you have a, a rest in peace. Um. Well, I always pay tribute to people that died, that died in the last years between albums, and obviously there's been a lot, but only people that I like. I don't put every musician on there or every whatever that died. I put people on there that mean something to me. Mm. You know, and the first person is Gough Whitlam because for me he was the greatest leader that Australia's ever had and and uh, I, I show respect to someone like that. Yeah. And but, the last name is Tony <laughs> Lopez, which I believe is the first uh, live yeah. concert you ever saw. Yeah, 63, I think it's February 63. My parents took me to the Capitol Theatre to see Louis Armstrong and Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez was the support act. I was probably 11, I think. And uh, when I left there, I just said to my mum, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. And she just said, OK, I'll support you. And if that's what you really want to do, you know. I mean, it's in my song, you know, New York City Blues, but which sort of expands a little bit, you know. She did say that she thought I was crazy, but that's a true story. But yeah, yeah. But she's always she always did support me. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's I like to pay respect to people on my albums that died, you know, and and, I, and my new album, my next one, will be for Paul McCarthy and uh, and uh, John Meyer. But you know, there's been a few deaths, so. Yeah, it's been a tough you know, I've already started. Months. I've already started writing out the next album. You know, the rest in peace. I've already got a page full. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, there's been quite a few people died. You know, since I did the cover. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so you know, yeah, I mean, I always like to pay respect. It's just, it's just uh, something that I've always done with all my albums. M not, I didn't do it. I don't think with the Zombie Party, but since then I did it every album you know I, I, it's just a respect thing it's, and you know I've lost a lot of friends in the last few years so you know it's been quite a difficult and I lost my mother obviously and I lost my best friend Ron Ron Parker so you know it's been a tough tough few years emotionally like that because um, you know I know everyone's getting older and all that but doesn't make it any easier. No, it doesn't make it any easier. And, you know, when you lose someone like Paul and, you know, John Meyer, I hadn't seen for quite a while, but, you know, we did a lot of great music together. Roy Daniel, you know, Pete Lizowich, people like this. I mean, they all work with me, so. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've known them for years, so. And, you know, I've lost friends in Paris, too, so, that, that I became friends with. So, yeah, I like to pay respect. It's just, you know, I like it because I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have a record company. I'm not interested in record companies. I know what I'm doing. Mm. I had one record company in France and that was an absolute disaster. I, I'm, I still don't know why it was a disaster, but, you know, it blocked me from recording for quite a while as well. So that was one of the reasons why it took so long to record the last album, you know, so. Okay, yeah. But, um, no, no, I like. I know what I'm doing. You know, I, I do everything myself. I, do, well, I have an agent in Paris, and that, but uh, who helps me with everything? We work together. You know, but uh, I like the freedom of. Uh, you know, I've done distribution and retail and exporting. I've done all that stuff. I know how it works. You know, I, I'd rather sell a thousand copies direct than, you know, 100,000 streaming stuff. Like, the album will not be on Spotify. I have a serious problem with this company. I've asked my uh, distributor to delete all my music on there. I have a serious problem with the royalty. I mean, it's just 
f I find it insulting, you know, mm. not just to me but to all musicians. So my website will have all my music available for download and 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 uh, to listen to and or by track or by album. I didn't have that on my old website, but that's just about to go up. So I just like. And also I like knowing who buys my stuff. You know, I've, I've got people that have bought all my stuff that I've never met that send me a, an email saying, you know, we're big fans, we've never met you, but we really love your music, we've got everything you've released, you know, I go, oh, you know, if you're ever at a gig, come and say hello, you know, but a lot of people don't, but they, you know, those sort of people for me are really critical people that have got all my music, I mean I've got a lot of music, so they've got all my vinyl, all my cassettes, all my CDs, I mean some people have got the box set, and you know, so I mean there's a lot of music there, you know. There's a hell of a lot of music. I mean I sold a box set recently, and the last... The box set came out in 2003. Yeah, you well know. yeah, I mean uh, it, it was, <laughs> I mean I wanted to do more volumes, but it's just such an expensive process, I mean it's just and time consuming, you know, I just don't have the money and and also I just, I want to focus on uh, new albums and that and playing, but I, if I did a box set, another box set, I'd probably just have it free online, mm -hmm. you know, not worry about manufacturing it, you know, because I've got so much music, you know, unreleased, I've got so much stuff, I mean, you know, I could do four, four volumes, you know, so, you know, if I did it, I would uh, just put it online for free, Yeah. you know. But I, I'm really trying to focus on the new album and, and, and touring re and playing, you know. So, you know, I plan on coming back when the quarantine ends and my priority is to play in Mel Melbourne's my main market in Australia and Sydney and that, but mainly Melbourne. So I plan to come back as soon as the quarantine's over and see my kids do gigs and, you know, get back to normal touring, really. Yeah. I, I love travelling, so, you know. And Australia's a great country. It's not like I'm going to forget Australia. My kids are here, so, and my granddaughter, so. Mm. Uh, I just think I, I'm just going into another chapter, you know, sort of thing. All right, so with that in mind, and perhaps there was a way of wrap, wrapping up, the uh, album's called Where Many Rivers Meet. Mm. So where do they meet? Well, good question, actually. I, I, like, I like that. I think I read, I think there's a book called that. I think I read about it somewhere. I didn't sort of rip anything off out of the book, so I didn't read the book, but I think I just saw it on a website or something, and I just liked the title, you know. Well... I think that's true because rivers don't necessarily mean river as in water. It can be anything. So it can be human beings, it can be places, it can be anything. So I tossed up a lot of titles before I decided on that title. I think that is the perfect title for the album because it's there's a lot of things... The album is quite diverse in the songs, you know, there's sort of blues and there's, well I think there's sort of three or four minute pop songs on there, what I would call sort of, sort of pop, I guess, in my, in my way I do it, you know, and there's sort of political songs and there's love songs and there's whatever, you know. So it's quite a mixture of sort of stuff and the acapella things are important to me because I do them live. You know, not many people do what I do like that, really. I, I don't, there's not that many people that do acapella field hollows, not the way I do it anyway. I like to, um, I mean, I've got a huge repertoire, so it's, it's sort of expanding so much now that it's, it's sort of going to be more and more difficult to choose what to do live because I don't write songs, record them to not do. I, 
I do it. I write them to play. So you know, obviously I have to learn the lyrics, but that's why I like to play because the only way to learn, in my opinion, is to play them live. That's where you find out whether they work or you know. So the more I play, the easier it is to learn the lyrics and and to and to um, change some of the songs. You know, especially songs I only sort of did once or twice before I recorded them. They're a lot better now, they're a lot stronger now because I've written more lyrics and stuff like that. But I think it's sort of, I listen to a lot of music so I sort of think it reflects a lot of the diverse music that I listen to really. I mean maybe, maybe it doesn't to a lot of people but when I, when I listen to it, it sort of shows up a lot of different influences, you know. Uh, you know, I, listen, I don't know, I mean, just I listen to so much music, you know. Well, maybe that's part of it, where all these different types of music Yeah, meet. well, it, I mean, it's true because it's, it, it's sort of like, for me, it's this sort of, for me, this album is a culmination of, of the last five years of my life, sort of thing. But also it's a culmination of cha you know, changes in my life and um, people I've met, experiences, blah, 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 you know. But And also because I feel so healthy, it's sort of like, for me, it's... Uh, I'm, I, I love rivers, you know, because I love water. So I'm not a great swimmer, but I love the ocean, I love a river. I mean, I like rivers. I used to go down to Maylands, Caledonia Ave when I was a kid all the time, you know. And I always used to go to Scarborough Beach on the weekends, you know. When I lived in Maylands, I used to ride my bike to Scarborough, and, you know. So I spent a lot of my teenage years down at Scarborough, you know. So I like water. So for me, it's, it's very much about the the meeting thing of, I think there's something in here that she, um, what is this, this thing about? Oh, the Greek goddess Aphrodite materialises in the ocean, carrying to the shores and the seashell. I mean, it's probably true, really, because it's, you know, it, you know, I'm into a lot of those things, you know, like, I'm not a religious person, but I'm, I know it's a cliche when people say they're not religious, but they're spiritual, but... I believe that there's something happening out there that you can't explain in words, like spiritually, and and you know I'm I'm connected to spirits, and I've always been connected to spirits. My mother talks to me all the time. My grandparents talk to me all the time. My young sister talks to me all the time, wherever I am. And. Uh, Ron Parker talks to me, for example. You know, people might think I'm a bit crazy, but you know, I'm, I know that I'm connected to people that I had such a deep connection with uh, in my life. You know, I believe in all that stuff very strongly, and even though they're not here physically, I mean, um, the talks I had with Paul McCarthy before he died recently. We always had a very strong mutual respect for each other, you know, and a sort of... We had... Um, I was lucky enough to be able to have some deep discussions with him before he died, like just me and him alone, which for me are precious memories, you know? Yeah. Like, we talked about life, we talked about music, we talked about the industry, we talked about songs, you know, we talked about... You know, for me it's... Um, I feel really lucky to have had that opportunity to... Because I wouldn't say I was a close friend of his, really. But I do feel that now. Mm. I always had a really big respect for him, you know? Mm. We, I don't think we ever saw each other socially, except at gigs. But 
he's had quite a big impact on me recently, you know, um, spiritually. To have that opportunity to talk to him alone and to see somebody dying with such dignity is really quite an incredible experience, I think. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm not the only one, you no, know. No, no. I'm just saying my personal thing, but I, I was really quite shocked that someone dying had so much dignity and integrity to accept death like that. It's really quite mind-blowing for me, you know. And you could see that he was sort of in pain, but I don't know, it's just, you know, he... I wish I could have given him the album before he died just to give it to him purely as a thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just to, I was going to visit him on Sunday. When I left, I saw him on the Thursday. Friday I had a, something on and Saturday I played him Rotto, but I was going to see him on the Sunday, but I didn't get the CD till Monday. If he had been still alive, I would have given him one just to give it to him, you know. Mm. But my new album will be for him, you know, the next one for sure. Mm. I think it's a big, big loss, you know. It's very, it's a very sad time, really. Well, when I spoke to him, uh, he was talking about, you know, gradually it may have happened a little differently as it turned mm. out, but just in terms of various functions, he, he wouldn't be able to do anymore. Like obviously mm. walking. Yes. Um, but he said, and then I realised there will come an hour when mm. I won't be able to play the guitar. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and that will, that, be, that will be the farewell to music. Yeah. And um, that, there were two other musicians in, in the room. Um, I don't include myself in that number. Um, <laughs> but you're sort of. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, but you could just feel all our hearts drop. Yeah. Because it was well, like saying goodbye to breathing. Yes. But what it made me feel like was even for myself, there's two guitars hanging on the wall at yeah. home that are more like artworks at the moment than actually being played. And mm. Don't waste. Don't... Well, you know, uh, I couldn't even imagine what I would be like if I couldn't play, play guitar. I, I, I guess I could just sing like I originally, you know, um, did which I was just a singer for the first seven years of my life like in music but I, I can't imagine not being able to play guitar and, and he did talk about that with me about not being able to physically play because he when he sent me the message when he cancelled the lyric he said I can't I can't play I can't play I, you know I tried to play it was just impossible and when I saw him at the hospital he said he just he couldn't he tried to but he couldn't he just couldn't uh, physically play it and that that must have been one of the worst things for him I reckon not being able to actually play you know mm. but but he sounded just the same to me like when he was talking it was it was quite incredible really mm. but anyway very very sad loss you know yeah very, very big loss but you know but, but such things they are spur you on to be in the yeah. moment and, well, to, and to use what you have when while you have it. Well, you know, I always have that philosophy anyway, but I mm. think after seeing Paul, he's even inspired me even more than I was before. Not that I need it anymore, but he has inspired me to, um, and we did discuss this actually, you know, because he said, you know, don't, he always said to me that, you know, one thing he admired about me was my work ethic, you know, because he said he thought I was the hardest working person around, you know. I don't compare myself to anybody, you know. I know I work hard, but it was a nice thing that he said that. But he said that he found that very inspiring, you know, and all that. But, you know, I don't know. I just, I think he was a big inspiration anyway, musically. I saw some performances by him that were just um, truly magic. He's the only act that did an encore at the Gaslight Club because the times were very strict there because it was the way I was on after him that night and I just went you have to do an encore I mean it's impossible you have to, the the response the audience was just so overwhelming it was he had to do he had to do a, a, a encore it was yeah. it, it couldn't I couldn't have possibly said to him I oh, know no encore I mean it was impossible for me mm. I, I I had to say to him do it you know he didn't he didn't want he 
he was going to get off, you know, he started packing up. But I said, you've got to do another song. I mean, you can't. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you yeah. have to, you know. So I just shortened my set, you know. But, mm, mm. but I saw him sometimes. I saw, I saw him some gigs that were just magic. I, I thought this was his best band. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think he was at his peak, mm. you know. I know we're going off my album, but I think it's all relevant, you know. Mm, mm. Yeah. So when you get to Paris... Um, I put my mask on. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you see it playing out? Well, I have got gigs booked. I mean, a lot of my work is private there. Uh, France has just gone into a lockdown for two weeks. So, but it's... My gigs are not obviously booked in October, so hopefully things will calm down a little bit by the time I get there. But I'm going to be very careful where I play. Uh, you know, I'm going to be very careful with my health anyway, and I am careful here. But I won't be doing any venue where I feel I'm in any danger. You know, I won't be doing some small bars that where I would normally play initially. I'll wait until things calm down a little bit. But I will be very careful uh, on my, with my health. But also, it's like I said to Aaron when I got here, my work has just started with the promotion of this album. I mean, I just sent out a hundred samples today. And I've got probably another hundred to go. I do everything myself and my agent in Paris does, we do all the stuff there. But in Australia, I do a lot of sampling and I've got a real solid network of people that have supported me and played my music for a long time, you know. So I did a hundred, I posted a hundred samples today, so. But I, but I do all that, my, you know, I hand write the address and I put the stamps on and all that, you know, so. It, the promotion and the marketing is the most difficult. Recording for me is easy, I don't. You know, recording is easy, mixing is interesting, and mastering is interesting, but the promotion and the marketing is where most people don't do anything, I find. But I have a very solid network and fan base and stuff, so the next few weeks before I leave will be very interesting. I haven't started pushing it at all. My new website will be up any, probably, well, what's today? Wednesday, is it today? Mm. Okay, I'll probably be up Friday, I reckon. It's, it's about 90% finished, so... And again, the website is very, very different to my old website. Again, because I wanted... I just wanted a different feeling, you know. I wanted, I, you know, I had that website for 17 years, so... And it was only in the last two years that I found out that if you load my old website onto your, onto a phone, it doesn't quite look as good as, you know, maybe on a laptop, whereas my new one will. I mean, technology's obviously changed, and now a lot of people use their phones. I use my phone for phone calls and texts. I don't use it for, I don't use the internet on my phone well, at all. Yeah, I think it might be about the only person who does. <laughs> I think he may be the only person What's who that? still uses a phone to well, call up people and except Paul. text. Paul, Paul said he only used his phone for, when he pulled out, we had two phones, I think, but he said yeah. to me, uh, we were talking about that, you know, because he got a text message or something and he was lo losing his glasses or something and he, he had two phones, he didn't know which one was ringing or that, and, and he said, you know, I only use it for phone calls and texts and, and I said, me too, I use it sometimes for camp, I don't know how to use, I don't know how to do a selfie, but I know how to take a photo. And I, and I basically use the phone for recording new songs. Because mm. it's very, uh, I like the fact that it's, it's really handy. Mm. I wake up, okay. at, yeah. well I, don't, I go to sleep really late, but if I have an idea, I just go voice memo, record, yeah. and I play, and then go back to sleep or something. And then I shift, I listen to it and keep some, I delete some, I shift it to the laptop, and then I can play it loud, 
you know, I delete a lot of stuff. But I like the phone for that. Mm. I mean, I've got a Zoom and I've got mini disc and I've got cassette. I, I got all this stuff over the years that I've used, but I find the phone really convenient now to do that. Mm. So I've got about, I think I got about 39, 49 ideas on my phone at the moment. So okay. that's how I work. I, I mean, I, I just put ideas down and then listen to a bang and go, oh, that's crap, you know. <laughs> although, although and then I go, oh, yeah, that's all right. And I think I can write something with that. Yeah. You know, most of it's grooves. I just write grooves, and I got, I got just so many notebooks full of. I just write all the time. Same thing. When I'm on the plane, I work on my new songs. That's what I do the whole day. I never sleep. I work on all my new songs, and I go through all my notebooks, and then uh, put. I go through all my notebooks, and then go into other notebooks and throw all the crap away and just keep what I want. That's how I work on the, on the plane, I always do that. Okay. So, I'm already thinking about the next album, really. I mean, I've got, like I said, 13 songs almost. I've got probably nine finished. So I've got another four that I've just written in the last month, which are just grooves, basically. So, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of work ahead, really. So, in a way, it's not bad timing to be a little bit, um, not, I'll, I'll still be playing a bit, you know, a couple of gigs a week, I reckon. But my focus, and in my focus is really on Europe, France and Europe, particularly France, with this album. I got it manufactured in uh, the Czech Republic, all through a French, the French office of this company. Mm -hmm. My agent deals with them publishing books and stuff, so I got an incredible price. And the quality is incredible, you know. Because mm -hmm. they do this thing called engraving, which I never heard of before, you know, where it really highlights the photos and the, it really yeah, brings out the photos and stuff. Because mm. it's very good quality. Mm. And uh, I'm really happy with the, with the whole packaging, packaging and that, you know. And you know, that's another reason why I wanted a, a bit of a variety of photos over a period of time to reflect. That's another thing with a title, you know. You know, going back to a photo from 68 to a photo quite recent, you know, a few photos quite recent, you know, it sort of reflects the thing of what I'm trying to get here, you know. I feel this is a sort of culmination of my life in a lot of ways, this album. So the title is reflective of that. Yeah. You know? Interesting life. Well, I think I've had a very interesting life, you know. I mean, I've travelled the world and, and you know, I'm lucky to be able to make a living from music, really. I mean, I've done what I... I mean, I've done other things to survive, but I think I'm pretty lucky to, you know, to do that, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think anybody that takes music for granted, that plays music, is missing something, you know. I mean, I don't take it for granted at all, you know. I've been to Africa and India and Pakistan and Mexico and New York. And, I mean, I'm all over the place. So I'm, I, I, and that's playing, you know, that's performing, you know. Places that they've, like festivals and that, where they've never had a white musician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find that quite bizarre, you know, but for me it's uh, it's an honour for me to play in Africa and places like that, you know. I'm, I'm, I've played with, in Pakistan, I've played with Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan's family and Sabri Brothers' family and, you know, I've played with some incredible musicians, you mm. know, so 14-piece Nigerian drumming band acting in Africa, I mean, they just saw me on, on the sound check because I went there solo. It was a festival celebrating the end of slavery, and they just saw me at the sound check and said, "Can we play with you?" And I just went, "Yeah." I mean, there's 14 drummers there and backing singers, and you know, it was great. You know, yeah. but unfortunately, I don't have a lot of um, recordings of these things. I mean, I wish I did. But you move in the moment. Yeah, I them. mean, yeah, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't dwell too much in the past. It's just I, I'm a great believer in history, but I'm I'm not really a nostalgic sort of person. 
I believe in history and I believe in my, my history and West Australian music history and Australian music history and just music history, you know, but I just, I'm just a small piece of the jigsaw, you know. I'm just one small musician in Perth or Fremantle, you know, I'm just one musician, I, I, you know. I don't claim to be any, import, any more important than anyone else. It's just what I do, you know. But I think I've been very lucky, you know. Well, lucky and and I think I work hard, but you know. yeah, you've made it your own. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think I'm a very disciplined man. So you know, I think I've I've been through a lot in my life. You know, I've been through ill health and stuff. So that's why I'm very careful with my health. So. Just make the most of it at all times. Yeah, I think you should, but I think life's too incredible. Even though the world's a bit of a mess at the moment, I still, I, I still enjoy life, you know. And I like being alive, you know. And you know, I like seeing my kids grow up, and my granddaughter, and I like seeing my friends. And you know, travelling obviously has been a bit difficult <laughs> in the last six months. And I mean, it will be an unusual plane trip, I would imagine, because they only sell. 60 or 100 tickets or something, they're not, they're not, you know, so it's pretty bizarre because I'm used to flying economy and, you know, sandwiched in there like cattle, you know. Mm. You can't, they can't sell two seats together unless you're travelling as a couple or with mm. two people. Mm. So if you're travelling alone, you don't have anybody next to you. Mm. So, which I like. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but I mean, it's going to be an unusual journey, you know, because. You know, obviously I have to get used to wearing a mask and stuff like that, but I just accept that. I mean, you know, I've made the choice to do it, so I have to accept that in Paris you go out of your apartment, you've got to wear a mask, simple as that. You don't, you know, if you don't wear it, you can get fined and, you know. Mm. But I, I think it's, until they get some sort of control on this thing, I mean, it's going to be around for years, you know, it's not going to go away. No. You know, it's not... I think people have to accept that too. And, you know, there's going to be outbreaks here. I, even, you know, I know that there's no, nothing at the moment, but they're going to have to open the borders eventually. And there are going to be outbreaks. There's going to be cases here. I think they got it pretty together here, but I think he's done a really good job. You know? mm. I, think he, I think he did the right thing too. Yeah. I think he's been probably the best leader in Australia myself this guy, McGowan. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's been very, dis and also, also I like him because he's been very clear, you know, his, his um, press things and that have been, he's been very clear on exactly what he's going to do. He hasn't, and he hasn't said something, then changed his mind. He's just been very clear, you know, mm. unlike many, in my opinion. I think it's good, really. I think people here, I, I know it's the safest place probably on the planet. Mm. And I know people think I'm a bit crazy to leave here, but I don't worry about those things. I, you know, I've got a real strong immune system, you know, so that doesn't mean I'm going to be you know, ill-disciplined or lazy, you know. I don't take anything for granted, like especially health, you know. So I'll be very careful. But I'm really careful anyway. Yeah. You know, when I went to India, everyone said, you know, you're going to get this, you're going to get that. I never got sick in India. Never got, I got sick coming back from Pakistan because I ate something late at night, which I shouldn't have, but I was starving and I couldn't get any food, you know, at the hotel. And that was a mistake. That's the only time I've ever been sick on a tour, you know. So Africa, I didn't get sick. So Mexico, I didn't get sick. So, I mean, I haven't been sick for a long time. I haven't been actually sick as in sick, except Pakistan, which is 17 years ago. Okay. And before that, probably not for 10 years. So I like being healthy, you know, I really like being healthy. I think people take their health for granted. And I, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to lose any more friends, really. So, no, you no. Know, I, you know, I don't, I, I've, I've got a few friends that are not too well at the moment, so sort of, weird times, you know, like for that. Mm. When I see friends that don't look too good, I'm, I'm worried, you know, so, so I don't know. 
No, I'm really positive. And, yeah. I'd like to thank you for the interview, Bob. Oh, you're <laughs> most welcome. And Erin, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's reflective times, and um, yeah, I think it's th interesting. That can also be good for yeah. I mean, it was int interesting after Pete Lizowich's funeral, which was probably the most incredible funeral I think I've ever been to. Like very moving funeral, and and the wake was quite it was quite interesting, really, because I sent you know I saw a lot of people there, you know, obviously that I knew, but I got the feeling from everyone it was sort of like a almost like up a like a wake up call to actually tell people how you feel about things you know because mm. a lot of people said to me things that they'd never said to me before and i said things to people that i've never said to them before you know mm. although i always try to be quite open about those things you know but i think people are maybe have it, it, it has made people a bit more reflective about life and just, you know, how you've got to value life and value friends and, and uh, yeah, just be careful, I guess. I mean, I think everyone's pretty aware of that. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm pretty sure in one way, I, I guess it's good that people have maybe... Um, looking after themselves better or something, I don't know. I mean, here it's obviously it's going to be a big change. <laughs> Going from here to Paris, you know, seeing everybody in masks is going to be quite abstract, I guess, in the street, you know. Because mm. I've never seen that before, so, so it is going to be a bit weird. But, mm. but even there I live a quiet life, so I don't, you know what I mean? I, I live a quiet life there, I'll probably go out a bit more, but I do live a more private, quiet life there as well as here, so, you know, I have quite a lot of friends there. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I feel really positive, actually. I'm, I'm really happy with the album and, uh, you know, I'd like to do another album with, the ba with a band, you know, like one day, you know. I mean, Rob Grant did an incredible job with this album, really, you know. He was... Um, quite critical with the with the way it ended up, you know, because the reason I chose him was because he was so enthusiastic, mm. really. I, I was almost going to do it in my lounge room with Aaron with the Zoom, you know. I mean, you know, that's I was almost at that level of doing it on such a basic thing and because I was going to do it mono, but he was sort of, uh, he sent me quite a lot of messages and all that and I went and had a few meetings with him and we discussed it and I wanted something really raw, like really raw sounding, not, not just sounding but raw emotionally and that, but also big sound, like I wanted a big sound, like I wanted a very world class sounding album but raw, and I think I got. I think I got what I was after. In fact, I think I'm happier with the album that I expected, and that's really. He captured what I did, and that's what I wanted him to do. You know, and he was incredible to watch. To to work with in the mixing and the mastering was quite a, quite an experience for me. I'm always there with the mixing and the mastering, mm -hmm. but watching him. Particularly the mastering, that was really fascinating because he was using reel-to-reel, -reel, you know, he was going from the digital to the reel-to-reel -reel analogue stuff and then going back, you know, there's all this sort of processing which was really amazing to watch mm. because I could hear what was going on and, and, you know, he's got equipment there from Hendrix and the Beatles and, the, you know, that Hendrix used and the Beatles used and Pink Floyd and all this stuff which is funny, you know. Mm. But, you know, he knows how to use that stuff. I, you know, he really was a, a, jo a joy to work with and we had a lot of fun, like we had a lot of laughs, you know. And I, I, I was good because he accepted, he accepted what, what I was doing, you know. Like, I, honestly, I didn't even hear half the stuff back until the mix. Mm. He just accepted that I just went, okay, that's all right, I'll do the next song, you know, just kept, <laughs> kept moving like that. 
we didn't have a break with the electric. I just did all the electric stuff and then we had a break and I might listen to one or two songs I think. And then I went on to the 12 and then we had another break and then I finished with the a cappella. So it was quite... And some of the a cappella stuff wasn't planned either. That was some of the songs were just last minute things that I love. Songs I did. I mean, there's a lot of a cappella that I didn't put on there mm. that uh, I didn't think were quite as strong as the performances. You know, there's a couple of songs I did there from other albums, but I don't feel restricted about that. I don't. I, I don't feel. You know, if I did it on another album, it doesn't matter. I consider these versions better. You know, so. Like I said, it was about work, so I want people to. It's you know, it's like a business, it's like a promo thing. You give it to somebody, okay? This is what I sound like live. Yeah. I can produce this better than this sounds. So that my thing is about work. So mm. it's all about work, you know. So I think it's a good, good um, business card, or what you want to call it these days, you know. I feel, I feel pretty confident that I can, you know, I mean, it's not like, I sold 10,000 copies of Loco, so there's no way I'm going to tell 10,000 on this, but, you know, sales have dropped dramatically with illegal downloading and digital and all that crap, you know what I mean? So I don't understand how people can listen to music on their phones. I, do, I just don't understand that. I, 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 I can't, I don't understand it, I, you know, I just can't see how it can possibly sound any good, you know. I suppose if you put it through a... You put the headphones on. Yeah. yeah, headphones probably better, but the actual sound of the phone is so bad. Oh, you know? no. But I, I don't know, I don't know what people do, but I, I'm, I'm a bit old-fashioned, I guess I don't, I, I, I just, I don't use my phone like that, so... And, you know, I deliberately did mono because I love mono. I, I, I really, really love mono. I, I listen to all my music in mono at home. Mm. And I always have, really. I've always had a stereo, you know, a, an amp with, that had a mono button. Mm. And I always listen to I like mono because I like, I like the sound being the same, like, you know. Yeah. I think we're kind of yeah. covered. Mm. When did you get here, Aaron? I'd like to thank you, Aaron, too, as well. And Bob. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure. And thanks for the thank food, Aaron. It was a delicious cooking D job. Wonderfully ordered. <laughs> <laughs> it worked all right. Yeah. Should make up some uh, takeaways for you guys. Oh, no, oh, no you, you have it, mate. Lunch. You right. it. You I'm going to stop rolling. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> The snake of desire is calling around me The snake of desire is calling around me Body's warm with passion and heat Tongue tied, we embrace When we kiss, we move as one Dancing to the music of a love Your kisses taste sweeter than wine When we kiss, I wish I could stop time When I wake up, I feel you beside me Now when you wake up, do you feel me inside you? I'm baby inside you I don't care what you call me, just call me Traveled many oceans to be with you. Love is like a friendship caught on fire. In the 
perfume gone and I smell the roses When I wake up I feel you beside me Now when you wake up Do you feel me inside you? A baby inside you Me, will you kiss me? I miss your lips when I can kiss you. Will you feel me? Will you hear me? I need your body beside me. Will you miss me? Will you kiss me? Miss your lips when I can kiss you. Will you heal me? Will you feel me? I need your body beside me. Your lips taste sweeter than wine. me kiss, I wish I could stop time The snake of desire is calling around me The snake of desire is calling around me When I wake up I feel you beside me when you wake up, do you feel me inside you? A oh, baby inside you, oh baby inside you, a oh, deep inside you, oh, baby inside you. Thank you very much.